what is good today youtube i am bringing you the top 10 the review my predictions and i might throw in a little bit of advice for the people who watches you know i don't know i'll, I'll figure that out at the end but guys let me tell you this is wow that's literally all i gotta say to this is wow i had a lot of clips i i just did probably two hours of editing these guys did absolutely amazing this round uh, we did have two eliminations so I'll go over that as well um, in the video but I hope you guys enjoy this um, and for the people that did not get clips in here I'm so sorry you guys gotta understand I literally just did two hours of editing on this video and there's so many clips so many good kills but I have to reward what I believe to me is the best so I hope you guys agree and I hope you guys enjoy it and well let's get into this review all right and here we have our top 10 uh, we're gonna be starting off with um, Alex's long shot um, for number 10 I think this is a very very good shot off of her so let's watch it like she sees him waits for the perfect shot and, and just straight beams him um, number nine is uh, GG Stick. So I don't know if you guys actually seen that. Let's watch it again real quick. So you see here, she sticks him right there with a thermite on the leg, I believe. Um, I think that's a, to me, that's got to be number nine. Um, again, there were so many clips in this, this last tournament. It was absolutely insane. But that has to be number nine for me because you don't see many people sticking. Um, and of course, my camera's got to be in the kill fee, so I'm going to fix that, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, but you see, they actually traded, which was very good. Um, and number eight, we're going to have Gigi's. I mean, she just beams him. There's, just, there's no other thing to say about that. That's just straight beaming. Number seven is amazing. Here we are. So, Jacob actually ducks underneath that we're gonna watch it again in slow-mo here watch this guys watch his name just drop you'll see it just drop like I think that to me what a play pops up shoots him you see the score 29 17 doesn't really matter but you know it is what it is uh, number six what a play from night hollow we got a Hail Mary again you can't see the kill feed but he kills him with that thermite right there what a play that was um, and number five, he stuns him right here. J4 stuns him, wraps around, shoots him. I think that's one of the best plays in this game. So he definitely gets number five. Number four gets turned and burned on. Dylan just turns right on Alex. 26-25. That was an amazing play from Dylan. Um, and number three definitely has to be rewarded to Alex. She shoots him here, got him weak. I call it the fart push because this is what, what a play, honestly. So Alex sees him again, pokes him. She could have threw it a little sooner. Hits him with a gas grenade and then shoots him. What a play. Afro winning the game right there with a drop shot. I got to reward him number two for that. And number one, my favorite, the beam. The beam from right there. That was such an amazing play. Guys. Well, I mean, you just, you can't. She didn't have enough time to react. Two shots, dead. That's my top 10. I hope you guys uh, agree with that. But we're going to go ahead and watch my reaction. Hopefully, you guys can hear the audio a little bit better this time. But again, I think these top 10 plays were absolutely incredible. That play right there, to me, was a dagger. 22-18. That, that was tough. That was a tough kill. And he just... he. I don't, I don't know what else to say. There was a lot of kills in this match that was straight beams from both sides not just Tokes side but from Gigi's side there was plays on this that was completely I couldn't believe they hit the shots but let's go ahead and watch the reactions together Wait, what are you? damn that's just insane I believe she stuck him I don't map I mean that that's was an right amazing now, that does not matter 
That was amazing. Just ducks under that. Ducks pops underneath up. that. I don't know if he even noticed that he ducked underneath that. I still love this play. Wow. I wish I would have seen his point of view on that one. I, this is a well deserved number five. Should be able to, yes, he can. Jay Ford swoops around, gets him. And I don't. She should have. She should have killed him. She, she misses the first couple shots there. She should have killed him. I can't believe that. I'm glad he didn't repeat that. He was gonna die. Throws it at the perfect time. Oh, that... Again, could have threw it a little sooner, but the game winner with the drop shot as a final kill. That was a damn good game for them too. That is one good thing about and then watch the this. FAL. It can it can do that right there. I love my it, reaction. It can do that right there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. I will get into the bracket play now. I will show you guys what the bracket is. And uh, I hope you guys are excited. All right. So here we have the winner's bracket. This is what it looks like now after round two is over with. Um, you had This is the winner's bracket round one. So you have Gigi versus Tokes, Dylan versus Alex. That was the winner's bracket round one. And you see Tokes did take Gigi in cargo, which I... Again, I anticipated that only because Tokes played Cargo. Um, so you see he won that round against GG. And then you have Dylan and Alex on Hill. And that was closer than I really anticipated. A 30 to 29. Like, guys, I want to just say one thing before we get to the next round. The girls did absolutely amazing in this tournament. Okay, first off. They're not last, okay? A lot of people always think, you know, the girls ain't, they don't have what it takes. Well, you just see there. Look at the round two. Look at, look at winner's round one. Gigi scored 23 on Tokes and Alice scored 29 on Dylan. That is insane to me. I am so proud of the girls in this tournament. I hope to see them actually win the next round. I'm hoping to see it. Um, but I, again, I don't know what's going to happen. So you see Tokes and Dylan, they will be in the semifinals for the winner's bracket. And that's going to be a, a good matchup. <clears throat> and here we have the loser bracket. Um, you see Jacob lose, or Jacob beat Shade 30 to 20. And, uh, well, you guys already see who he plays next. Jacob will go against... Uh, GG and shipment that's gonna be a really good matchup. Uh, let's see if GG can get the revenge You know GG did lose um, To Jacob in the last tournament. So maybe GG here can finally Turn it around and knock Jacob out of the tournament. This is a loser bracket loser goes home um, Afro beat my prediction. I thought Afro was gonna lose to J4 He turns it around wins it 30 to 26 in an amazing upset um, I thought that was a damn good match. If you guys did not go watch that, please go watch that. Uh, they use streaks, but we'll fix that in the next round. Anyway, Afro won't be able to use streaks. He's on Hill with Alex. <clears throat> um, that's going to be another good matchup. Um, so then, you know, whoever wins out of Jacob and Gigi and Afro and Alex goes on to the loser semifinal which is going to be an intense one. So really the winner plays the winner. And I cannot wait for this. But let's go back to the winner's bracket and let's talk about it. Um, I don't know. It's not posted on there. But Tokes and Dylan will go off on shipment. They are playing on shipment. And my prediction is I'm going to go with Dylan on this one. Um, again... The only reason I'm going with Dylan is because he did beat Tokes' brother in round one, as you see over here. Dylan did beat Jacob, 30-27, to 27, on shipment. Dylan played on shipment already. He knows how it's played. So I only predict Dylan winning because of shipment. Um, 
it's going to be a close one, I think. I think it's it's going to be a toss-up. But this will be Tokes' first time on a non-gunfight map. So i like to see what he brings to the table now since he can actually use Specialist Streaks, since he can actually use uh, Dead Silence. So I won't be surprised if Tokes win. But I just have to stick with Dylan just because of the map. That's it. So we go to the loser bracket. My prediction is Jacobs beating Gigi. It'll be one hell of a dogfight. I think it's going to be a very close match. Again, I could be wrong. And sorry, Jacob, if you watch this, but I do kind of hope Gigi takes it. I kind of hope. I want to see the girls. You know, I want to see them go somewhere. I, I'm super excited for them. I think they did absolutely amazing in the last round. But this new round, they're going to see what they have to offer. And Afro versus Alex is our prime time match this this round. I want to say Alex only because she played on Hill. I want to say Alex is taking this because she played on Hill. Um, and she played so well against Dylan. But again, when I pick somebody, sometimes it just reverses on me. And again, it's nothing against Afro. It's it literally Alex played on this map just now against Dylan. And Dylan, I think, is one of the best players in this tournament. And he almost lost to Alex. So I believe Alex just has the upper hand because of the map pick. But again, I won't be surprised if Afro wins. Um, and now that I think about it, I don't think I've picked Afro in any of my tournament matches. So I'm so sorry, Afro. I hope you still love me, bro. Um, nothing against you. It's just Alex literally just got off this map. And I think she's going to be practicing it a little bit more. Um, but I do think Alex and Jacob will be in the next round. That's my prediction. Um, as for Shade and J4, they are the first ones to be eliminated. Good luck in the next tournament. If you guys join, I think you guys did absolutely amazing in this tournament. So let's just look at the – see how they got there. Um, let's see. There it is. Tokes beat J4. I don't remember the map. I think it was Cargo, yes. It was Tokes beat J4 on Cargo, 30-22. to 22. Um, And Alex smoked Shade. On Hackney Yard, 30 to 7, and that knocked them guys down to the loser bracket. And you see that uh, Jacob beat Shea 30 to 20 there, and Afro he did wonderful against J4 on Shipment, beats him 30 to 26. Um, why is it seated this way? Is because uh, Alex did get first seed. She went to the loser bracket with 29 points. As you see, she has 29 points. Um, she's in the winners bracket now. So when she loses, like she did, she drops down to the loser bracket with the score of 29. And Gigi only scored 23, meaning she got second place and she's in the winner's bracket. Drops down to the loser bracket. There you have your uh, Jacob obviously moving on and Afro moving on. Uh, Afro gets last place because of J4 scoring 26 and Shade only scored 20. So it's first seed versus last seed. Alex... First seed from lose, a winner's bracket comes to loser bracket to face Afro because he's got last seed. I hope that makes sense. If I talk too fast, I can explain it in the comments. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> I know I do talk fast when I talk about this because it's to me it's second nature. I, I, I know brackets like it's nothing. Um, but Gigi comes from the winner's bracket. She scored 23. She has to go against Jacob since Jacob score or let him score 20 so that's the even match right there alex since she gets first seed goes against afro that's how that works um, but i'm super excited for the next round i hope you guys are too and i'll see you in the next match so i said before that i might um do a little bit of review and help uh some new players out um in a 1v1 situation uh I do a lot of these tournaments. I've played in a lot of these tournaments as well back in the, the beginning of time, I guess you could say. Um, I don't really partake in them anymore. I just like watching them. Um, I like commentating. It's just something I like to do. Um, a lot of people are still a little bit scared to go against me. I don't know why. I'm not, you know, I'm not what I used to be. So I'll say that. Um, but I do, I do enjoy 1v1s a lot. Um, it's because it's skill based for skill based like who's got the better gun skill who's got the better um, strats and uh, I will say I can give out a few hints and pointers for people who don't really want to be one um, 
the number one thing to me is vision. To me, Call of Duty, you know, any first person shooter, it has a lot to do with vision. If you don't find a player, you're you're not getting any information. If you skip over, if you frame over the player, you're not you're you're not gonna get as many kills as you think you should. Or I mean, good players still miss. I'm not gonna say that. I'm just saying like if you don't try to pay attention to what you're doing, you're not gonna you're not gonna see the player and the player might have better vision and see you quicker and, and set up a play. Um, but vision to me is definitely number one reason why a COD player is good um, because they can gather that information and know what to do next. Um, but number two is actually more tactical. Um, so I, I see a lot of my players in this tournament uh, and just in general wasting their their tacticals and lethals. Now in a 1v1, it's more useful like if you play gbs with a team you play game battle or something you know you can one or two players can waste their their stuns or something to try to get information but in a 1v1 um your tactical is mainly used to try to find that player and then your lethal i mean you can actually use that to your advantage um one of the plays that i i wasn't able to show in this match was uh shades amazing play he he threw a thermite to the left of jacob or i think it was to the right of jacob to the left of him on his screen he threw it he shut off the lane and then pushed the other side so he kind of took my advice a little bit um you throw something that blocks off one lane and then you push the other side you have both lanes covered now he threw a thermite to jacob's right and pushes jacob's left and actually was able to kill jacob and that's something that a lot of the players don't don't do. Um, Alex did very well in her match. She actually did. He uh, Dylan was running EOD, but he was still getting hit by grenades quite a bit from Alex. I mean, she was throwing him where uh, she thinks he spawned. Um, but again, a lot of players just throw their stuff, and it's like, you know, if I shoot somebody and I can't finish the kill, and they, I see them run left. I'm throwing my grenade where I think they're gonna be, in the you know on the map. So uh, a lot of things, you know, you can you can figure that out. Uh, it takes a, lo a little bit of experience, but again, um, my advice to some of the new people that does one v ones is literally just hold on to your lethals, uh, find them with your tacticals, find them with your your vision. Um, play slow and keep keep a 360 view uh, more or less is if you watch me play a 1v1 sometimes I'll, I'll either stick myself in the middle of the map but my back's always against the wall somewhere like I know they're not going to come up behind me they can't um, like on hill hill for example I'll keep my back against the mountain I'll keep my back against the the water or I'll keep my back against the, the spawn. You can call it camping or whatever you want to call it. I don't care what you call it. I call it winning. That's the difference. Um, a lot of people say, oh, well, you camp to win. No, I, I just win. That's the difference. If you guys watch Call of Duty, like the pros, there's literally times where they're just sitting still. They're not even moving. Like, they can literally get up and go make some food and come back, and they probably didn't move. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can call it campy. You can call it whatever you want, um, but I call it winning. If I'm keeping everything in front of me, I know where they're going to come from. Um, Call of Duty is based off of three lanes most of the time. So if I keep all three lanes in front of me, I know where you're coming from. Um, and number three is being unpredictable. I mean, you can't do the same thing over and over and expect to win. You can't push the same lane over and over and expect to win. Unless that person that you're playing against is complete dog shit that's it um but with players like me tokes gg alex you do something over and over we're gonna pick up on it um a lot of actually a lot of my players in this tournament will pick up on that but if you do it over and over you know you're predictable so you're gonna have to learn to be unpredictable do something that's completely different the gas grenade that alex was using that's unpredictable you don't expect that all the time um even even thermites you know 
a lot of people is using thermites, but if you switch it up and put a, a C4 somewhere, who knows? Are you going to predict that? Probably not. Um, it's just stuff like that. Snapshot grenades. I don't. I never seen anyone use them yet. I seen. Um, I think the only person I seen use them was uh, Night Hollow. He's eliminated from the tournament now, but I did see him using it. I think in his first match against Alex. Now he didn't use them very well. Again, snapshot grenades is to gain information. Tacticals are used for information. If he would have threw them not just randomly when he spawned it, then, you know, he might have been able to get some more information off of that. But, I mean, there's a lot of things you can use. Um, I did not ban heartbeat sensors. I know I'm surprised people haven't used them. I mean, in a 1v1 situation, uh, that might be a, a something to pull out. But, again, if my players don't watch this video, they won't understand what I'm saying. So, I kind <laughs> of, I can't wait to see how many heartbeat sensors come out next round. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, leave a like, comment what your predictions are. I would really love to see them. And uh, let's get this next round started, guys. Peace out.